Hi, I'm Justin Kay, Field Specialist in Horticulture for MU Extension. Today, I'd like to give a brief overview of soil testing procedures. When soil sampling, we should think of how large the field is and how uniform the field is. Soil samples should consist of uniform soil areas. So if you have fields that have different soil color and or different soil texture, you'll want to sample those separately. If you have uniform flat fields, you can sample up to 20 acres at a time. But if you have more hilly or rolling ground, you want to break those samples into five acre blocks. You'll want to do 15 to 30 subsamples in a given field and take these in a zigzag or random pattern across the field. The more soil variability within the field, it's a better idea to use a greater number of subsamples. You'll want to make sure you'll label the samples before you send them to the lab and draw a farm map so that when you receive the recommendations, you'll know where the soil came from. Make sure to sample at least 300 feet away from gravel or crushed limestone roads as they will drastically impact soil pH. Samples should be taken to a depth of six to eight inches. A soil core or soil probe is a handy tool if you're taking lots of soil samples. However, a sharp garden spade can do a great job. You'll want to take your subsamples and combine them in a plastic bucket. Give them some time to dry and then mix them up thoroughly so you have a composite representative sample of that field. You'll want to bag one pint of soil to bring to the MU Extension office or to send to the laboratory. Make sure that you submit the samples on a commercial fruits and vegetable form, and I'll show you what those look like in just a second. You can drop off samples at your local extension office. We have one in every county in the state of Missouri or send them directly to the MU Soil Testing Lab in Columbia. It takes about 10 to 12 business days to get your results back. When you're submitting a sample, there's a number of things you wanna make sure you check off and get the correct information on this form. First, you'll wanna give a sample ID to the field, list the number of acres, whether or not it's irrigated, list the topography, one for level upland, two for hilly upland, and three for bottom land. You'll want to list the last time that it was limed, as well as the soil region of Missouri, which can be found on this map that's on the soil testing form. You'll also want to list the prior crop code, which I listed 56 here for red clover. And then for each soil sample submitted, you can get recommendations for up to three crops. I'm going to go ahead and select blueberries, which is number eight, which is a five-year-old planting. I'm also going to select number 30, which is cucumbers, and we don't need to put an age on there because it's annual crop, and number 42 for tomatoes. I'm going to submit this for a regular soil sample, which will give us our pH, phosphorus, potassium, and calcium, and magnesium. I'm also going to submit it for particle size, which can help you determine the soil texture and the distribution and percentage of silt, sand, and clay particles in your soil. When you receive the results back, they'll look like this. I've highlighted some information on the left, such as the pH, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. This soil has a pH of 6.1, and you can see on our limestone recommendations, we don't receive any limestone recommendations because this soil pH is within range for the crop selected. For phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, we'll receive pounds per acre, as well as a relative rating from low to very high. You'll also receive information such as your soil organic matter, which the sample comes in at 3%, and you'll receive recommendations for the crop selected. This recommendation is for a tomato crop. We have 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre, as well as 20 pounds of phosphorus per acre recommended. You'll have additional information at the bottom of the soil test report, like letting you know to apply the recommended nitrogen for tomatoes a quarter at planting, a quarter at two weeks, a quarter at four weeks, and a quarter at six weeks. You'll also have information if you need calcium, such as applying gypsum at 40 pounds per acre for fruits and vegetables, except blueberries and potatoes. And the other additional information, like if no phosphorus or potassium is recommended, retest annually to determine when maintenance fertilizer should be applied. There's some very simple fertilizer calculations that you can use to determine how much fertilizer you should put down based on your soil test report. So if we break our 100 pounds of nitrogen into quarters for tomato application, let's just say we want to figure out how much fertilizer we need to use to put 25 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And we have a 15.500 calcium nitrate fertilizer. So we'll take 25 pounds of nitrogen per acre divided by the decimal value of the percentage of that fertilizer, which is 0.155.
will come up with 161.29 pounds of the selected 15.500 fertilizer per acre. Similarly, for the calculation for phosphorus, and we have a 020 phosphorus fertilizer, we can take the recommended 20 pounds of phosphorus per acre and divide it by the decimal value of that percentage, 0.20, and that gives us 100 pounds of fertilizer per acre. The three numbers on the fertilizer bag are always listed in the order of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and these numbers on the bag represent a percentage by weight of these different nutrients in the fertilizer bag. Soil testing is recommended every two to three years at a minimum. If you have lime or sulfur applications, you should put this down in the fall because it takes time for lime and sulfur to adjust soil pH to appropriate levels. Phosphorus and potassium are generally applied as a pre-plant application and soil incorporated before planting. Nitrogen on most annual crops will generally need to be side dressed throughout the cropping cycle to ensure that adequate amounts of nitrogen exist for the plant throughout its growth. It is recommended to stick with the same soil lab over time so that you can know there's continuity in your test values and your recommendations. If you have additional questions, feel free to contact me at the email below. We have some resources here for the Soil and Plant Testing Laboratory, as well as the Soil Test Interpretation and Recommendation Guide for Commercial Fruits and Vegetables, and we'll include those in the YouTube description below this video.